Shalom. I want to give a praise and honor glory to Yahweh, Shem HaOshai, by Shem HaKadash, and the Lord and the elders and apostles of great millstone and common truth and peace, blessing, and the citations to the hopeful elect. And um, yeah, man, this is a spontaneous lesson. I was just in the kitchen, thinking, and the scripture just came to my head, and it was concerning um, <laughs> something that basically happened um, yesterday. Which um I was getting some groceries off Uber Eats and my mum needed some toilet roll, so I went to go get some. And obviously when you click on the item, it has the one and then the plus or the the what's it called, the dash to basically take away. And I applied the toilet roll and then it said <laughs> like a, a, a little option come up. What should I say? A, a dialogue come up, and it was like, "You've reached the max limit of this item." So I was thinking, if they're rationing out toilet roll, <laughs> imagine what's going to happen with the food. And then again, we know the scriptures talk about famine. It's it's a part of the signs that the Lord told us about. But you know what? Let me head on over to. Second address, nine and one. And it says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. When thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told you before, then shalt thou understand that it's the very same time wherein the highs will begin to visit the world which he made. And yet these things were told to the prophets before these things have even happened. Hence why it makes mention of this in Isaiah 46 and 10. He regards their forty six and tennis is declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So there you go, man. These things were told to the prophets before before the world even began, man. Because the prophets were already around. The prophets being the hundred and forty four thousand being the house of David. <clears throat> and just like the scriptures say, man, um, is it Hosea 12 and 10, if I'm not mistaken? I've spoken by the prophet. Now where is it? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, Hosea 12 and 10. It says, I've also spoken by the prophets and I've multiplied visions and new similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. And yeah, those, them similitudes gone into basically describing things that they're seeing in these visions using the vocabulary they had back then. For, for an example, um, with the nuclear missiles, John said there were arrows. Even um, King David he talks about the arrows that have been ordained to uh, literally destroy. <clears throat> and also, um, let me continue on. And like I said, these things were spoken to the prophets before the world began. And also, I can actually get another one. Here we go. Luke 1 and 70. It says, As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So like I said, these things... These visions, these prophecies were shown unto the prophets before it, it, it even came to pass. And so the prophets can prophesy, which <laughs> the testimony of the Lord Yahweh Shai, or the other nations like to call him Jesus Christ or Isa Islam. That's in um, the Quran. But um, yeah, this is the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Revelation 19 and 10, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the power being Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. 
So yeah, man, you're saying you're prophet. You should, you should you should have the spirit of prophecy, man. You should be able to break down these um these prophecies in this book. You should know the signs. Why? Because the Lord would have shown you them. He would explain it to you. And that's why it talks about the Lord sending the comet out, which is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, or in the Hebrew, the Rakak with Dash, which basically. <clears throat> Let me get an example. In one of 5, it says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, after were destroyed them that believe not. And then again, <laughs> you got the two thirds in the land of America, <clears throat> which the majority of the Israelites are there. They're going to be destroyed for the same reason, because they believe not. <laughs> Not only that, like the scriptures say. Ecclesiasticus 2 and 13. It says, Well unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. So there you go, man. <clears throat> but yeah, carrying on. Um, verse 3 it says, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world which we see that. Like it also makes mention in Matthew, earthquakes in diverse places. And we see that, man. Literally, there's earthquakes happening all over the earth, man. At, at record numbers. <laughs> and you got uproars of the people in the world. People rising up and processing. That's, that, that, that's a sign of um, uproars, man. Literally, people gathering together to protest against something. We, we see a lot of that now. <laughs> And carrying on, it said, Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. But like I made mention about Isaiah 46 and 10, and also the prophets, man, being there with the Most High and with the Son. I'm going to say the Son, I mean, the first of the, of the line of the sons of God, being Yahweh. <laughs> and it says, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, and yet those that have been given the eyes to see and the ears to hear, or should I say those that have the Holy Spirit, they we be able to see that the end is manifesting, man. Like, literally, the MLT is being, being shown. <laughs> like, we're literally getting closer, man, to that CBDC, that central banking digital currency, which it all goes hand in hand, man. <clears throat> and carrying on, it says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. But like it says, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, for whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land within my borders, but I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So, yeah, uh, look at that, it's 944. Well, praise the Alva Shem Hosher. But um, carrying on like I was saying, yeah, there's a small remnant that have been um ordained to believe in the Lord's doctrine. I want to say the Lord's doctrine, I mean the hundred percent truth. <clears throat> um, which that comes out of Great Millstone. Evidently, those that have the Holy Spirit, you, you know, you already know. But um, <clears throat> let me get that. I don't know where it is, man. Ephesians 1 and 4. And it says, According as you have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, being holy meaning separate, and without blame before him in love. So, <laughs> there you go, man. And you also got Second Thessalonians 2, 2 and 13. It says, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And that just shows you that this baptism that he's talking about is, is spiritual. It's a spiritual baptism. It's not a physical thing now. <clears throat> like it says.
Here we go, Ephesians 5 and 26. It says that he might be sanct that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So it's hearing the, the, the Lord's doctrine. That's what washes you and cleanses you. Re receiving the <clears throat> the Lord's doctrine, man. The, 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 that's, that's, the, that's the spiritual baptism. <clears throat> or being sanctified by the Spirit, man. Being able to understand the Lord's doctrine, which that isn't given to everyone, hence why they come up with some crazy stuff. And then on top of that, they can't even prove it with the, the Bible. They can't. They'll get some... Um, some verses that don't even correlate with each other. <clears throat> and even then, they don't even understand the words that are coming out of their mouth. Like, when you read this book, you have to know what each of the words mean, what he's saying. Otherwise, you're not going to understand it. For example, <clears throat> going into the, the word world, like, literally, from the book, from the language it was translated from, which is the Greek, there's three meanings for the word world. So, <clears throat> for example, there's cosmos, there's eon, and then there's an age. <clears throat> Actually, no, cosmos, eon, and yeah, oinkanemi. <laughs> and literally, if you translate those three words into English, you'll get the same word, which is world. And that's why you have to go back to the Greek translation to find out what that word actually is. Because over here in, what's it called? Um, John 3, 16. Because like it says, for God's soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is taken out of context. Because the word there, world, it means cosmos, which an example of cosmos would be um, when a mother says, my children are my world. It's pertaining to a particular thing or a particular group or a particular person. This is, that's an example of cosmos, which the cosmos that it's talking about here is, what should I say, the, <laughs> the word world that it's talking about here is cosmos, which is not everyone. Because like it says in John 17, let me get this, John 17. Where is it? Yeah, here you go, John 17 and 9. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So who's, who's that he's talking about? I pray for them and not the world. And you see in verse 9, that word world there is oinking me which means the whole inhabitants. An example of oinkinemi is, um, in the scriptures anyway, would be, <clears throat> let me get this, this is Revelation 3 and 10. Yeah, yeah Revelation 3 and 10, this is an example of oinkinemi. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And then I forgot to get an example of cosmos, which this is cosmos in the scriptures, man. Without... Isaiah 45 and 17, and it says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So when he's talking about, in John 3, 16, he, he gave his only begotten son to, for the world. He's talking about the world of Israel, man. And Israel being the tall tribes, being the Negro, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, including the Mexicans and similar Indians, man. <clears throat> and then obviously we know that there's going to be Israelites um, that have the appearance of these other nations because they were scattered there. And their forefathers had children with the woman, with the human woman that were living there. But now their bloodline, or should I say their appearance as a bloodline has changed. And it's changed to the people that were scattered amongst. 
So when it talks about Israelites coming from all nations, it's talking about those Israelites that have been scattered there due to slavery. <clears throat> and then also, let me get, um, what else again? Yeah, Eon. Which Eon goes into an age. And this is an example of Eon or an age in the scriptures. In the just <clears throat> and now it says for Esau is the end of the world, being an end of an age, being an end of a rulership. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So yeah, literally Jacob's age or Jacob's kingdom will start when Esau's ends, which Esau has the dominion now. <clears throat> Going into the Caucasians. <clears throat> and then again, not every person that looks so-called Caucasian is actually a so-called Edomite because, like I made mention, man, there's confusion of face, man. There's Israelites that look like so-called white people or Caucasians. And an example would be my cousin on my dad's side, man. <clears throat> and I literally, my eye showed me a picture of, um, of, of one of my cousins, because at that point in time, I was deceived. I was deceived by IUIC. They were basically talking about, you can only be an Israelite if you're so-called black, <laughs> which that doesn't make no sense, because the Israelites are scattered among all nations. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. And what she showed me was um, a so-called white, a white girl, said long, dark, brown hair, which was like curly or wavy, and she had blue eyes. And I was thinking, <laughs> she, she's, a, she's, she's an Edomite? But no, because then she showed me her dad, which is a, he's a dark-skinned um, Rasta, Jamaican. And <laughs> her mother, being um so-called Caucasian or white or an Edomite, is 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 it's absolutely crazy, man. Like that's why the Lord talks about um not judging by the appearance, but go by the spirit, which that's what the, that's literally what determines the nationality. The the dad the dad's seed, the nationality comes from from his from his seed, man. <clears throat> And that spirit that gets sent down into that body to inhabit is going to be the same nationality of, of the, the, the dad. And although <clears throat> when it comes to genetics, yes, the appearance of what someone can look like comes from the dad and mother, but their nationality comes from the father or the, the dad in that sense. But um, let's carry on with what I was going into. Um, which was talking about the food. As the next mention, in 2nd sixteen and 22, it says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And the sword could go into civil war, go into actual war, because... It's still yet to happen. I want to say it's still yet to happen. I mean, all the nations gathering over in the East for war. And in that war, they're going to be using nuclear weapons. Or should I say hypersonic missiles or cruise missiles that can carry nuclear warheads. <clears throat> and what you need to understand about that is... The nuclear payload is less. So although it will do some damage, it's not going to affect the entire Earth. But when it comes to World War Three or the Third World, those intercontinental ballistic missiles, they will affect the whole Earth by way of the nuclear radiation. <clears throat> but um, yeah, let's carry on. <clears throat> Yeah, that was, that's what I was going to get. 
it's uh, oh, I forgot what it's called, man. Um, uh, it's in the Book of Lamentations. Yeah, here we go. Lamentations 4 and 9. It says, They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away stricken through for the want of the fruits of the field. So, yeah, it's better to, um, <clears throat> to be cut off by the sword or by some sort of weapon. Because literally, that pain, it, it, it will go away. Like, as soon as that body is dead, the spirit is going to leave it. It's going to go back to the one that gave it, which is the power or the power burst from our share. <clears throat> but being slain with hunger, there's a whole lot that can happen, especially with starvation. And that's around, um, <laughs> you've probably seen them um, <laughs> in commercials about Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> and um, literally, that, that, that's true, man. Because literally, people are going to be doing things that the thought they would never do because of the lack of food. As it makes mentioning, um, they're going to address 15 and 16. Actually, no, let me start at 14. This is woe to the world and them that dwell them. For the sword and the destruction draw of Naya, one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands, which this is going to civil war. Or you could think about um the movies that pertain around martial law and civil war. <clears throat> and it says, For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the cause of the actors shall stand in their power. Meaning, when all hell breaks loose, they're, they're not going to be sitting there looking to the government for help. Like, literally, that's why, literally all over the earth, but mainly in um, America, there's a thing called preppers. And they've got bunkers, they've got shouters hidden in the forests. They've got supplies of food and all this and that. There's a reason why they have it. Because even they know that this type of thing is going to happen. And it's, it's all going to start with um, the falling of the government. Man. <clears throat> And it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And yeah, man, join those ties of civil war and chaos. People, people ain't going to be traveling like they used to. And even then, the, the transportation like buses and trains and subways and all that stuff, they won't be running. And if you have a car, you better hope you have enough thingy, um, gas. Because if you don't have enough, guess what? Your car's going to stop. And then you're going to be left to those that are waiting, man. <clears throat> and just like those movies in, in um, well, what's it called? Um, the Book of Eli. <laughs> Where Eli was, um, he was on his little walk and he came across this woman on the road. And what, and what did the woman do? So she basically was there to, to literally lure the men or couples into a trap. And that's that's gonna happen in today today's age, man. Don't be surprised, man. Don't be surprised. <clears throat> and it says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. And a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. And pity going into having compassion. But like it says here, they'll have no pity. So they're going to have no compassion upon his neighbor. Meaning, if you've got something that they need, they, they're going to take it. And like it says, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. They don't want to come in with them weapons, man. And especially over there in America. That need everyone's got weapons. Especially um, firearms. And it says, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So yeah, a time of famine. 
his family just goes into a scarcity of food. It doesn't mean that there's no food. It means that there's um not enough of it. Like there's food, but there's not enough to go around. So some people are going to starve. <clears throat> and not only that, like you said, it's a great tribulation. For example, people banding together to create little, little gangs and acting like they, they own <laughs> they own that part of, of the city. And and you see it in you see it in movies all the time. And even in games, for example, The Last of Us, which it literally what I'm saying literally happened there. Minus minus the, the zombies. And even then <laughs> even then the other prophets. They've they've had dreams of zombies coming, man. And I ain't gonna lie, I've had multiple dreams of, of zombies being here. <clears throat> so yeah, but Jacob's really gonna be a, be crazy. Like it was so since man. Jeremiah Jeremiah thirty and seven. And this is the last for that day is great. And if you actually go into that word great, it goes into um something that's above average or something that's above the normality. So like it's talking about here, it's talking about Jacob's trouble. So like it says, for alas for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And yeah, the ones being saved out of it are the ones written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But like it also makes mention, it's a time like never before. It's a time of trouble that hasn't been seen upon this earth. So imagine all these bad things, all these bad times that have happened on the earth. Jacob's trouble is going to surpass all of, all of that, man put together <laughs> even even slavery man it's gonna it's gonna bypass that it's gonna surpass it <clears throat> but yeah man i hope this was edifying i'm gonna give a praise on the glory to help us and shalom